Hello, Chloe. It is Friday, November 15th, 2013. Welcome to Scenic Practice Room Green at LVC. You've been to this one before, at least uh, in this video thing you've been here. I don't know if you've actually been here. But what is being, Chloe? You know what? Never mind. So today we're going to talk about some facts. But not just any facts, Chloe. Today we're going to discuss five facts that you probably already knew, but you know, it's always nice to hear them again. Anyway. Fact number one, Chloe. You know singular nouns that end in S? Yeah, they can be kind of a problem, especially if you're trying to do possessives. Take the word James. Is it James' house? Is it James's house? Is it James' house? I went onto the internet to find the answer to this question, and I found out that, of course, since it's the English language, there's no easy answer. Here's the general rule. You form the possessive of the singular noun ending in S with an apostrophe S. And then, some books will note that the pronunciation can vary based on comfort. Of course, those pronunciations will vary between different demographics and, of course, different dialects. Speaking of dialects, fact number two. You know those Tumblr posts that compare American and British English, and then there's that one person who always says that American English is actually what British English used to be? That's not true. Why not? Well, we have to talk about language evolution. English developed from Old English, which developed from kind of the Proto-Germanic and Scottish and the Scandinavian languages. It's just like a big old sack of combos. It's like a trail mix. You shake it up, and then you get like too many M&Ms. So British English developed that way, and American English developed from the colonies went overseas to the America, and then their language kind of evolved with their culture in there. Like, British and Americans went like separate directions. So it makes sense that their languages will also go separate directions. We have no reason to believe that American English would sound like Old English. And American English was also influenced by the Native American kind of language words like moccasin and raccoon and squash, as well as the other colonizing nations that were also colonizing North America at the point, mostly the French and German. So there you go. There's why... American English and British English are completely separate. Number three, does iPod stand for anything? Or does the I in Apple products stand for anything? Uh, no. Kind of, but there's really, no, it doesn't, sorry. However, there have been some theories that it does stand for Internet Portable Open Data. And somebody said, and I quote, pod is the Greek word for feet. So why did Apple use that name? Is iPod supposed to be a walking thing or an MP3 player? Why not use something like IMP3? Number four, breast cancer ribbons. Why are they pink? The color for breast cancer awareness is pink. Why? Simply, pink is taken as feminine in Western society. That's it. There's no other reason. Ha! You thought there was going to be another long, drawn-out answer, do you? And finally, in about 155 BC, three philosophers from Greece went to an embassy in Rome. Now, Rome and Italy at this time had taken on the appearance of shaving the beard. However, the Greeks, it was still not very widespread in Greek culture. So these philosophers had the beards, and then the Italians associated beards with philosophers. So now we have the concept of the philosopher's beard. I may make another video entirely about beards, because there's a whole bunch of interesting beard facts. But for now, and as always, Chloe, I will see you on Tuesday.